Hello and welcome to India Career Center, the one-stop podcast for students, professionals, parents and guardians. In every episode, we will try to deal with a current topic that needs expert advice related to career, career guidance and career mentoring. Please welcome your host, Dr. S. Kimmel, to the show. And happy listening. Hello and welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode on India Career Center. Uh, today, I'm really happy to host uh, Dr. G. Sendil Kumar uh, from Salem, who is the chairman of uh, Helix uh, Open School and Learning Center, uh, which is specializing in the, in the field of uh, learning disabilities and uh, taking care of uh, students and children who have learning challenges. I think the school is dedicatedly working for uh, over a couple of decades now, um, so it could have been, could not have been a better uh, guest speaker to speak on this subject, and I'm so honored uh, to have you on this show, uh, Dr. Sendil. Thank you so much uh, for investing your time, and welcome to this show. Thank you, Mishra. <laughs> it's been uh, always a uh, good to connect and uh, be a part of your show. Like, yeah. Thank you. So to kickstart our discussion, um, take us quickly through your early life and your career journey so far, uh, so that the audience is able to connect um, and understand the context of how you have, what you're doing now. Luckily, we had a very good school in Salem those days. Even today, it's called Holy Cross Matriculation. One of the wonderful, run by the Canadian management those times. So that was a opening for me, like what real education is all about. So fifth standard to 12th standard, the school really made a big change in my life. Coming from a Canadian management institution, so you know very well the discipline part, your communication, those were the more important life skills rather than what we are going to score in the exam or not. So that's a kind of a school. Like It was, a overall development was given there. So we used to have more than 30 clubs. Just think of those days, having a 30 clubs, like economics clubs, uh, like uh, for, um, what do you call that? Um, audio, for audio stuff and other things they had, for radio, radio club. Yeah, I remember radio club. Of course, geography club, history club, and all those things were there. Like, But such different clubs were also there. And we have to be part of two clubs every year. Mm. That's important for a student other than the studies like. See, that's how the management was all about. Very forward thinking. That really helped me to understand the education and other part of the life as such. I was a sportsman. I was uh, into cricket. Uh, then I was in the NCC. I was the first sergeant of my school. Uh, then uh, represented uh, uh, Republic Day Parade uh, during uh, 1880, sorry, 1987, like Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister, Gani Gail Singh, Shankar Daya Sharma. It was a golden moment like those, uh, being a first sergeant of the school, making the school proud there. Then 11th, I took uh, Commerce Group, Economics, Commerce, Accounts, Mathematics, English and vernacular Tamil. So till 10th standard, it's more of uh, sports and other activities, not concentrating on studies because we never used to get time at all. Because, or most of the time we'll be on, on the ground or on the NCC parade and other things. But that taught us a lot of discipline and uh, focus towards what we need to do like I think today schools are missing out on all those activities. Somewhere we are missing out on all those activities. Luckily, the, uh, like in 11th and 12th, I was offered all the courses to take it up since I was uh, into NCC and made the school proud. The brother Arun, I still remember him. Uh, last year only he passed away. So such a wonderful principal. He really takes care of the students and believes on the potential. He never talks about the talent. He talks always about the effort. See, that is important. Most of the time, what people do is they talk about the talent, like, okay, you have that talent. Talent, ta like discussion is not important. 
what is the effort that you have done? So mm. that I have learned from him. Like so, in eleventh and twelfth commerce group, happily did my commerce, stood for the school election. So I was the school people leader. So somewhere that leadership was there in me. Like right from the beginning, uh, I used to have a lot of friends, interpersonal skills. Those things were very natural, and schools also provided that opportunity. Later, mm. I moved to PhD College of Arts and Science to pursue my business management. Since my my father was an oil mill owner, we were producing castor oil, manufacturing castor oil. Uh, I thought that I will take up that as my career. But when I was doing my business management, I understood more than the business. I was very good at people skill. Mm. And... Uh, Organization behavior and psychology was my favorite topic uh, during those days. So my professor said, I, it seems to be like you are more inclined towards HR, organization behavior, psychology. So in MBA, you try to do that. Like, so I was then I was not interested to pursue MBA. I just wanted to move to MSW, Master of Social Work, specializing in medical and psychiatry. Mm -hmm. So from arts group, to completely science uh, thing like. So most of my professor asked me whether it was the right decision or not. But thanks to all my uh, BBM professors, especially Gopalakrishnan, uh, who studied in US for a brief time and came back as a professor to us. Like he was our HOD. So he used to introduce us to all the magazines. Like So those were the days that week magazine Mm -hmm. Even today it is there, but that was introduced then in 1990. So he used to say, come on guys, try to read this. Uh, you will see what are the careers that you are going, it's going to upcoming careers. Mm. So it's one of, in 1992, 93, I have to finish the my UG degree. Wherein when I was so looking at the big uh, magazine that talked about what are the future courses. Mm. In that, the third course which was suggesting or the area that is going to boom in 2000, those days 2000, since we were 192K, that was the uh, uh, discussion part itself. Mm -hmm. So always medicine, IT was the first two. The second, third one was very interesting. It talked about mental well-being, mm -hmm. those days. So then I was very clear, like, yes, this is what my passion is all about because I'm interpersonally, I'm good. Intra also, I'm very good on that. So I had the natural, that ability. So I thought, okay, I can connect with people. Like, So connecting with people made me much easier. So I thought, okay, the choice would be better. Instead of MBA, let's take MSW. Again, in that, I wanted to do psychology, not HR. Mm. Because in BBM itself, I was good in HR aspects of subjects. So I thought I don't want to repeat that. Instead, I have an opportunity also to do MSW, medical and psychiatry, and I can take up the HR course also. Mm. The university gave us that option. I can uh, read and I can write the exam. So that option was there. So I thought, why not do psychology, then, medical and psychiatry? Initial days were very tough because five, day, five years of no science background, completely biology and everything is out. From day one, I have to go to hospital, discuss with the psychiatrist, psychologist. It was a little tough, but anyway, with the kind of, uh, we always say the grit and other things, and you have the passion, you will do it. And MSW course really suited me well, mm. because it was only three days of college, and rest of the three days, we have to be in the field. Fantastic. So it's not that five days coming to college and doing all the regular stuff. So during my first year of MSW, I had an opportunity to visit 16 institutions. Mm. So that is where I, I went to school, alternative school, disability school, then to industries, hospital setting, community setting, uh, alcoholism, prison. So all these were a great exposure for us and that observation skill make us to think a lot like so that gave me what the life perspective was all about so then I was very clear I'm going to be in the field of HR and education so that I have decided 
during my final year i was very clear one i'll be part of the school education second i'll be part of the corporate world where training on organization behavior mm -hmm. so i started honing my skills on those uh, areas so after completing my msw in 95 um, i i started preparing for my civil service union mm -hmm. public service commission so for that i was in chennai then i later moved to delhi Mm. Delhi, you know that Bajram Rao's even today it's uh, it's there. The institute is there, so I was part of the institute. I was accessing uh, uh, JNU library since my friends were there. I, uh, it helped me a lot. So during JNU visit, I used to attend certain seminars. Like so, those days I have seen uh, Arun Jetli, Manmohan mm. Singh. So they used to come and give their lecture. Though during that course of time, I I think if I remember, it was Rita Sengupta, Sengupta, and the lady who spoke about alternative education. Okay. That really sparked me because I wanted to be in the school education, but not to do the regular schooling. Mm. So she talked about open school system. Right. 1996, 97. Mm -hmm. That gave me a really okay in India also we can do this until then I was uh, not at all knowing such things were available in the government side mm -hmm. but during my college days I used to get inspired by Jittu Krishnamurti okay. JK schools that's called KFI they call it as Krishnamurti Foundation of India so Krishnamurti is a great philosopher uh, he was born in Madanambali Andhra Pradesh Rishi Valley is a very famous school. Yes. Uh, then in Pune, Shayadri, in Bangalore Valley, then uh, in Chennai, The School. And now they have Patshala in Kanjiburam. These are the schools in India. In abroad also, he has a one school in uh, US and UK. So I was inspired by his philosophy when it comes to education. Because in his one of his book, he talks about Education should not inculcate fear in the minds of the student. So true. But unfortunately, uh, later after 1995 or so, uh, education really become a fear factor among the students. Like mm. That is where many people got disconnected with the reality. What is real education is all about. So I really wanted to work uh, for children who had these learning challenges. Again, when I was in Delhi, uh, I was in few projects. Uh, I, because since I was studying, I don't want to waste my time also. I was part of few projects uh, in education and training. Hmm. One of the project talked about disability. See, those days, we talk only five disabilities. One is the blind. The another one, auditory challenge. Then physically disabled. Those days we used to call it as a mental retardation. Nowadays we say intellectual challenges. Mm. Only a locomotor, a locomotion challenge. So these were the five recognized disability those days. Today we have 21 disability listed in the PW Act, Person with Disability Act. That happened in 2016. Parliament passed this bill. Till then, Nobody knew what is dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, dyxenia. These are all minor challenges, but causes a lot of challenges for the child to continue in the regular street. Mm. Now, this is what we called as specific learning disability. Mm. When you say simple learning disability, there are other classifications. Since I don't, I am unable to see, I cannot read. Correct. So that's a secondary problem. But whereas with specific learning disability, children are normal. When I say normal average intelligence, their intelligence is 90, but still they are not able to perform. They are not able to read. They are not able to write. Because of that, examination is a challenge. All those things. So these things were not aware in most of the places or none of the education institution uh, were able to understand this problem those days. In 1998, when I came down to Salem to start my career, 
when i visited schools their school said such problems are not there these children are lazy children mm. extra tuition will do it so we don't want your support okay i understood it's more of an awareness is needed rather than uh, pushing something mm -hmm. so i i firmly decided that i'm going to be in this field i wanted to create an institution wherein it should be research based and wherein children should be given lot of uh, life skill orientation subject flexibility that's how the helix open school was started in the year 2000 right and uh, so during the delhi days you decided about your phd as well or yeah. when did uh, that happen 95 when i left the college i informed my then hod mr Mu uh, dr murli daran i informed him sir i will come back to do a, to do a phd with you he just mm -hmm. laughed at me and said i am not sure that you are going to do a phd because you are a guy you are going to venture lot of things sure you will not come into an academic area at all but i informed him very clearly sir i'll come back so after 10 years after having all the experience only i wanted to do phd like mm -hmm. so after 10 years i went i registered he was very surprised even then he said anyway i'm going to be a research guide for you i'm sure you will not pass the because i was into direct phd okay mm. Uh, now i didn't do my mphil i was a so it's a direct phd like yeah so in direct phd anyway you have to write part 1 that is compulsory you have to do an mphil uh, you have to write the three papers and all those stuffs were there like he thought i will not write the exam and even if i write the exam he thought i will not pass qualify because, mm -hmm. because of my busy schedule of traveling and doing training doing lot of stuff by then like luckily i <laughs> i passed because of the experience that i had the examination was nothing for me because it was all practical i passed and i completed my phd like so uh, he was a mentor who really believed in what i was doing from day one he supported me he said it sendil this is important and you have to do so that's how phd happened and uh, what is the subject area for you it is school social work how important a school social workers principal contributing to the entire uh, uh, school environment oh very interesting yeah because see in abroad you have social workers in school correct social workers in community hmm unfortunately in india uh, still school, school social worker is not been recognized at all hmm only in kerala the go has been passed that msw students who have done medical and psychiatry has to be posted in a school as a school social worker mm. see my phd was the first phd in india which talked about school social work very good previously an indian author called dr anjali devi anjali gandhi i'm sorry anjali gandhi she was a professor in jamia islamia university she has written a book in 1985 or 87 uh, a book on school social work on an indian perspective wow <clears throat> previously all the references would be only abroad like people would have done in us or uk and other places so when i was looking for uh, primary data and secondary data i didn't have any primary data at all in indian context at all then in pondicherry university one of the professor called dr nalini informed me there is a person called dr anjali devi in india she is the only person who have done a uh, research on school social work and yes she has written a book on school social work mm -hmm. i when i went to flipkart and ordered it said out of stock out of print and out of stock i got the address from dr nalini i wrote letter after letter to her for about 6 months like i didn't get any response but i didn't get frustrated i started my data collections because she was in us those days you know that email we don't know whether they will be seeing or not so writing letter is the best part and phone number also she was not picking up later 6 months back i had a call from dr anjali gandhi i said i am anjali gandhi 
what are you doing like why are you sending such so many letters to me like <laughs> i said ma'am you are the only person that you have written a book on school social work and i wanted to do my phd on that so can you help me out she goes you are so fascinated and a wonderful lady she came down all the way from uh, delhi to meet me to respect her we conducted a national level conference on school social work in psd fantastic so she got she brought one book she said this is my last book sendal which i am going to give to you in my so i have that copy in my library that's close to my heart that's how i started the phd okay great excellent um, so so many fascinating stories to really learn from your journey so far um so moving on uh, learning disabilities as you said uh, now there are 21 listed disabilities which is recognized by a act in the parliament uh, at the same time do you feel that uh, there is still a lot of work to be done with respect to really uh, reaching that information uh, to the ground level onto the schools even in uh, cities as well i don't know about these uh, in the in the towns or uh, tier 2 tier 3 cities but at least in the bigger cities is there a acceptability that there are so many different type types of challenges and hence the kind of support which is required for the students is required see it's a very good question like uh, see india is such a big country with the geographical thing and population um then we have around 30 35% of our uh, young population almost when i take about 20 30 it's almost 60% okay but the school going children are in a huge population now like again the schools unfortunately the bh structure does not have a program on learning disability till 2015 or so and after that only people just made a part of that as a subject and we as an expert used to go on talk for only two days only mm-hmm. two days about what is learning disability but still the awareness is must people are very confused when we talk about dyslexia with intellectual challenges so there need to be lot of awareness which is required very good that sarva shiksha abhiyan uh, uh, in tamil nadu maharashtra kerala in other parts of the country they did a wonderful job mm-hmm. training the teachers like government teachers right but again resource is very important your resources are very important yeah uh, that's, that's where still the gap is there yeah i mean the the unfortunate part is that uh, the nep for example uh, suggest that every school should have a counseling staff i mean at least the bare minimum counseling should be done um, and i believe there is a new initiative called the pm sri uh, there are certain number of schools which have been recognized uh, by this uh, pm sri initiative where it is mandatory that some amount of psychological support or psychometric uh, support uh, should be done uh, but on the ground how much it is really happening is something which is difficult to assess we very recently just last week we attended a international conference on uh, education uh, at chennai wherein uh, the consultant to indian government uh, with regard to disability um, she was there and she was giving us a data what is the reality and what actually uh, it's in the market like it's very staggering okay uh, the still people have to come forward when i talk when i say people the parent have to accept and come forward and meet the clinical person and uh, understand what this challenge is until then it's not going to be reported at all mm. because still in india it's been felt as stigma not only in india all over the world the stigma is there mm. yeah mandatorily nep says that you have to have an inclusion for that inclusion you need to have a psychologist you need to have a social worker you need to have an occupation therapist all those things inside the school mm. the law is there 
but it's going to take time. We need to also understand, see how many psychology colleges are there. Mm. Uh, even when you say, okay, uh, 100 or two, 500 colleges are there. How many people who are going to study that are going to come for this work? Yes. So it is not just studying uh, uh, a basic degree in psychology will solve this problem. So you have to do a PG degree, then you have to get specialized. Then you have to take a special training. Mm. Because as of now, professors are not equipped. Right. Even the professors, they know to handle psychology. They know to handle the specialist. Say if it is applied psychology, they will teach applied psychology. If it is counseling psychology, they will teach counseling psychology. But when it comes to specific learning disability, now these people need to have a kind of an experience. By only theory, you cannot teach all these things. Mm -hmm. So the faculty development is also important in college level. And then otherwise you need to have a diploma programs wherein private people like us with our own experience, we run an NGO. So uh, my certification is approved by the local university, Periyar University. Uh, people have to take that. Okay. So such things are happening. I would say when I consider 1997 to now, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra, Maharashtra have done a great work. Fantastic. I'm not sure about other places because uh, other places, uh, long time it's been, I have traveled to Orissa and uh, the, the previously I've done it. I'm sure now Orissa and other things are also taken at this very seriously and they are going to train people now. That's what the, uh, the expert informed us in the conference. So I see a lot of positives uh, in Indian context. Now, uh, principles are given awareness by the NCRT board. By CBSC, they give they send us a lot of circular. Uh, so it's mandatory that training is happening. Basic training is happening in all CBSC schools. With regard to Tamil Nadu, yes, as a forerunners, I know that I, I, I was a special resource person for Tamil Nadu for 10 years. Mm, okay. I have trained more than 20,000 teachers. Fantastic. So things are happening. Okay. Now at least a teacher knows what is learning disability. Okay. But with regard to doing a remedial program, intervention, I think we need more people and resource and facilities, infrastructure. Okay. So for those people, I mean, you said by and large, the south and western part of India is progressed, at least in terms of the schools understanding about this uh, subject. Uh, for rest of the people, uh, can we briefly talk about what, how do you define this learning disability? And uh, you said 21 different disabilities are there. Uh, if you can briefly touch upon them, at least some amount of awareness will go through this conversation. Okay. See, uh, when I say specific learning disability, it is a neurological challenges. It's a challenge in the brain wiring. When we say brain, let's not worry. <laughs> because end of the day, whatever it happens, it happens here. The yes. learning happens here. The problem is using this technical jargons. See, that is why it is for our own knowledge level, I am saying this neurological part and other things. For the layman people to understand, it is a processing challenge. That's all. Mm. There is an input, process, output. Correct. So in input, these children are fair enough. They don't have challenges. Few children might have challenges. Then it comes into different category. Hmm. With regard to specific learning disability, at least 80% of the children will not have any of the problem in the sensory aspect of it. So they take the information. The data has been taken. When it is in process, there is a little challenge. Okay. In the process, we call it as uh, perpetual skills. Mm -hmm. See, when I say cat, for you, you don't have any problem. So you will say the spelling is C-A-T, cat. Mm. 
but few children who have these challenges will write it as KAT cat. Mm. Okay. People might think he has not understood. Repeatedly, he will make this mistake. This we call it as discrimination, sound okay. discrimination, or we will call it as auditory discrimination or visual discrimination. Okay. His IQ is great. His mm. IQ will be 90 plus. Because when we say average IQ, it should be 90 above. Mm. For dyslexic children, IQ will be always 90 above. Right. So in that category, he is passed. He is, he is average. Or we call it as, we, we should not use this word normal. But people used to say, laymen used to say normal. Like. Uh, as an expert, we don't use that word. Uh, we say it's an average intelligent with 90 above. Even a person with 120 IQ, 130 IQ can also have these challenges. Yes. Albert Einstein, uh, uh, Winston Churchill, Tom Cruise, Stephen Spielberg. In India, Abhishek Bachchan was the first person to come out and say that yes, even I, Amir I, Khan, I will. I, I no, not Amir Khan. Not Amir Khan. Okay. Dyslexia? No, no, no. That's, no. Uh, okay, he did a movie on uh, dyslexia. Yeah, Tare right. So Tare Zaminpur gave us a kind of an understanding towards this subject. Correct. Okay, so a child is very normal, doing extraordinarily all other work. But only when it comes to reading, writing, spelling, he is fumbling. Hmm. So that is where we have to be very careful. So this, we call it as, this discrimination could be a challenge for this child. Sound or auditory challenge. Like that, there are eight areas. Okay. Okay. That's called, we call it as perpetual skills. Perpetual skills. Okay. When child have a challenge here, because it's here, it's here. It cannot be seen. Correct. Only one is expressing by writing or speaking only you can understand this. Correct. Same letter C when it is spelt as city, city, mm. Mm. he will write it as S-I-T-Y. <laughs> For cat, it was K-A-T. Correct. For city is S-I-T-Y. Correct. When you say phone, he will write it as F-O-N-E, phone. Phone. It will be a repeated mistake. You teach him 100 times, he will do this mistake. In regular school, that's how teachers are trained. Correct. Correct. Then people say, okay, you teach phonetics, immediately child will change. Right. Then phonetics was introduced. But unfortunately, phonetics are done only till your KG. I know. After that, nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. For few children, you have to do till third standard. Okay. That's important. See, we all know that brain after the birth, it's still in the developmental aspect. Yes. Till six years, six and a half years, we have to wait. Correct. So that it, it gets uh, connected and lifelong the neuroplasticity. Then came 1970, the neuroplasticity theory uh, was on the limelight, which said, yes, children can be trained. Mm. Then only a lot of material came in, a lot of training came, but it all came from the Western world. Mm. People who are able to afford, they went to the Western world, they came. Children who know who were comfortable in English, they were able to take that. Mm -hmm. But India is predominantly a vernacular language-based country. Each Correct. state has different vernacular. So that is where your vernacular things needed the material support. So we started. So one of the aspects I'm talking about is dyslexia. There are dyslexia means challenges in spelling because of that reading, because of that writing. Mm -hmm. Then there is something called dyscalculia. Okay. It's problem in mathematics alone. Mm. Somebody Simple. doesn't like mathematics. It's not like mathematics. The child has a challenge in mathematics. Right. Your basic operation itself, the child will have problem. Correct. Your plus minus. Yeah. Uh, your All directions. Mm. Uh, up, down. 
south, west, east, north. All those things are challenge for these children. Like. Mm -hmm. So because of that, uh, the basic, maybe they will know the plus and minus. After that, the uh, multiplications and divisions becomes very challenged. Then you can say there is integers, then uh, percentage. All those things becomes really difficult for the child. Mm -hmm. So this is dyscalculia. Then comes dysgraphia. Okay. Graphia means it's writing. Mm. Future challenges in writing. Okay. Very, very shabby. Wherein they know the subject, but they cannot write. Mm. That's again a challenge. So uh, when you say dysgraphia, basically those are the people who cannot express while writing. Or no, no. they are very bad in presentation. Orally they will say, uh. but while writing, Okay. The presentation okay. and even the letters and the scribbling aspect. Ah, okay. Unbelievably, like you cannot read Messy. it. Messy. Right. So that's again another challenge. A child can have only dyslexia or only dyscalculia or only dysgraphia. But other child will have all these three problems. All the three together. This is where school is finding difficult to assess. Okay. So teachers are not very clear about this concept. Okay. Apart from that, there is one more called dyspraxia, that is a locomotion challenge. Okay. So children with dyspraxia will have a trouble uh, in uh, their uh, language also and in the written part, moving part. So it's a combination of problem. Okay. Sorry, challenge, not problem, challenge. Right. Then we have something called dysemia. Dysemia mm -hmm. is social awkwardness. Mm -hmm. So people like to be introvert. Very, very intelligent, but unfortunately, even the dressing part or the communication part, all those things will not uh, suit what their real intelligence is all about. That's called social awkwardness. That's called dysemia. Like this, you have autism. Right. Hyperactive. Attention deficits. Now, all these things are other challenges. Right, right, right. So, to classify this, we need a very good clinical person with clinical psychologist. Then we need a remedial teacher. Mm -hmm. That's again, a special educator is important. This is where India needs more professionals. Mm. Because the disability population, we say... It will be around, uh, SLD alone will be 12 to 15 percent. Really? Yeah. There are no official data to back this. Official idea. data says uh, NCRT has done a research. Okay. Uh, they said it's around 8 percent to 10 percent. Hmm. But in real context, when we people have seen in our own centers and other things, it goes up to 12 to 15. Okay. As of now, we predict around 3.5. 5 crore children will have this challenge. My goodness. But reported is somewhere around 50, 60 to 75 lakhs. Oh God. This is a, this is what reported. Thanks to Corona, after that only a lot of reports started. Mm -hmm. Why, Why corona, that happened? No, during Corona only uh, parents were really able to understand the child because they were... Oh, they were able to see them at home. Yes. Previously, they thought school is not doing properly. Teachers are not good. Right. Now, when they started looking and observing the child in the home for two years, they were able to see something. Oh, my child is very smart, but he is struggling here. Okay. Then, uh, Corona gave us an opportunity for all of us to do a seminar. So, many people were looking at what to do. So they joined the seminar. Mm. Then they started understanding, oh, this could be a problem for my child. Correct. Then they started consulting the specialist. So for one aspect, thanks to Corona. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. awareness purpose. It helped us a lot. Right. So this is something a data like around 3.5 crore people have been predicted, but what's only 75, uh, 60 to 75 lakhs is reported. And obviously, if uh, this is uh, not detected early by parents or by teachers, 
then th this remains unsolved with the people and that inefficiency creeps up throughout their life. Previous, before the neuroplasticity theory, people said this is a permanent disability. Okay. It's a lifelong. Now, after 1970, the neuroplasticity theory says with the due training, proper identification, due training, the things can be modifiable and trained. Okay. But still the 10%, 20% struggle will be there. Hmm. So catch them young is the mantra now. Right, 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 right. So early child uh, centers are important. So the reduction is important. So we need to have some universal assessment also. Mm -hmm. You can't just do with only English. You need to do with vernacular. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> I mean, the young people, young parents who are watching this or listening to our, our conversation, what would be your advice to them? Because uh, um, the, uh, the limitation of a school um, is still there. I mean, that is something which we cannot address immediately. Of course, there are progress, as you mentioned, uh, from 97 onwards till now, there are substantial steps taken by different states uh, to progress in certain direction. But obviously, it is not going to be addressing the complete solution. Um, so young parents, I mean, parents with young children who are at home and they are sensing that say, there's something wrong, uh, they should not panic and they should actually do certain number of steps. And I would want you to tell what are these those basic steps which they can take. See, uh, first for the young parents, which is very important because they are all learned, they are very mature. Because of that also, there is a problem. Because they have learned, that's a problem. <laughs> because they're not able to accept. They are not able to accept. Like, mm. And the young parents are glued only to um, the Google material. You know, because of that, they sometimes it's misinterpreted. So they should not get panic first. Correct. First, they should understand the basic growth and development of a child. See, for the understanding, if they go to a gynecologist, when during the pregnancy itself, during with the gynecologist, they can take up a discussion, what will be the growth and development stage and what are the chart that is available? Because when the child is born, in three to six months, the child has to turn. Hmm. Then it has to uh, like what? Uh, crawl. Crawl. Then sit. Then stand. Walk. By then, speech comes. Language comes. Yeah. So we need to understand this growth and development aspect of it. Once they understand the growth and development till the age of three and a half to five, there is a chart available. Correct. If you Google it, there is a chart is there. Sometimes it varies from country to country. Not on a, a larger scale. For a two months to three months period. Okay. So that kind of a basic awareness is required for the young parent to understand the growth and development of the child. Right. Once they know that, they can see the difference. If they spot the difference, don't get panic. Go to a psychologist. Mm. If a clinical psychologist is available in your place, first go to a clinical psychologist. Correct. Suppose if you don't have a clinical psychologist, Go to the psychologist who have experience in this field. Mm. Even if you don't have a psychologist, then you'll have a special educator. Correct. So these are the people will be there to help you out and make you to understand. Right. So let's not panic immediately. Doctors will always there to guide you. Then the support system is there, psychologist, psychiatrist, clinical psychologist, applied psychologist, educational psychologist, counseling psychologist, all these things are now coming up in India in a bigger way. Mm, correct. So all these people will have an awareness of what this is all about. Fantastic. I'm sure in all the town, now most of them have done psychology and they are doing it. But make sure whether they have they are trained, they have that experience. Right. And uh, 
if somebody wants to reach out to you of course i will share your contact details on the show notes they can always uh, drop in a mail or call you and uh, they can reach out to you as well uh, of course you may not be present everywhere physically but probably some of the calls you no, can we have we have a very strong support system we okay. have a psychologist in our team we have applied psychologist we have a clinical psychologist we have an occupation therapist full fledged unit like uh, since we are in this field for 23 years uh, we are the pioneer in this part of the uh, country like when it comes to salem i am the pioneer so that's where we are predominantly known in tamil nadu uh, so we have a center and of course thanks to corona i was able to reach out to all over the world so people from france people from germany <laughs> tanzania that was a surprise for me tanzania and many people from punjab and delhi they uh, reach went out through to our you. program we have an online program also fantastic yeah okay now let's uh, talk little more about your uh, school now uh helix as you said you started in 2000 and uh, tell us a little more about this school how it is operating what are the different things which you are doing through this school see we are a specially accredited it's called saida okay it's a specially accredited center uh, by nios national mm-hmm. institute of open schooling okay so we are the first school in salem or we are the only school in salem as of now to cater to a level certificate b level and c level when i say a level it's third standard b level it's fifth standard c level it's eighth standard then secondary 10th standard senior secondary 12th standard so that is how in nios it's that your child can register in nios if they want to be a part of a learning center they can come and do it actually it is not required they can be from home and they do a home schooling but since we are a specially accredited center in rural part or even in a city parents cannot teach them regularly in a right. daily walk of life they have to go to job they have their own things so in our center it's a day program center and we have uh, like boarding also so wherein what we do is we first assess the child a clinical psychologist will assess then our my wife is again a psychologist she has done her mphil uh, in learning disability she took up a training in nims higher secondary rabat uh, she was the architect in uh, all the assessment and remedial programs and teacher training so that will be the second step after the assessment she will assess once the assessment then we will know which category the child is right now the category is all for only clinical purpose please understand correct that will not be informed to the student okay yeah it is only for clinical reporting which was which is very important mandatory also mm. because tomorrow if you want to get concession from the government we have to apply this we have to submit this information to the government to get the board exam relaxation mm. so this will be the second step so once it comes to the report is been seen by the concerned authority in the helix open school then we will in uh, we will counsel the parent first right we will inform okay it for a basic remedial program it might take one year or two year simultaneously he will also go through the education also with vocational guidance that vocational is important for any child for this particular child it's must i would say right so in our school we start the vocation even at the at the age of 8 itself mm the introduction will be done okay basic electrical plumbing basic cooking farming fine arts all these things will be given introduction side by side simultaneously parallelly all these things will happen hmm and occupational therapy will also will go through for the children who have those challenges okay so learning happens remedial happens subjects happens 
vocation also happens simultaneously. Fantastic. It's like a 360 degree actually. Correct. We follow multiple intelligence theory strongly by Harvard Gardner. Mm. Our okay. lesson plan is integrated with that theory. So children get opportunity to explore in all those intelligence. Fantastic. So from say from eight years, when the child seven, eight only, they will come to the school. Seven years, mm. eight years only, they will identify and they will come. Even now, they come after 13 years and 15 years. Okay. But considering the previous thing, now we are happy that awareness has happened. So people are coming much earlier. Mm, okay. So when they come much earlier, when the seven and eight years, our work would be much easier to identify and move forward. And also it is easier for you to mold people in the right very, direction. Very true. See, uh, last year, uh, from Bangalore, one child was referred. He was, he was 14 years. He was in 15, 10 standard. Mm. And the school said, we cannot do it. So when we came, he came for the assessment, his reading, see, he is a smart guy. If you see mm. his artwork and sports, unbelievable. Okay. Unbelievable. But his reading age, I would call it as, when I say not the maturity, mm -hmm. the reading age, the spelling age, we call it as. Okay. That is second standard level. Oh, God. You can only read that words, <laughs> not the sentence at all. That is yeah. only the difficulty. Otherwise, smart child, unbelievable smart child. Okay. But you can see the age now, 14 years, 15 years. Yeah. Uh, this will take at least another two, three years for him to run through this. Remedial program. Remedial program. Right. So by the time he has to take up his 10th or 12th standard, he will, he will be around 17, 18. So that would be a disturbing thing for the parent and sometimes even for the child. Mm. So this is where coming earlier would solve many uh, of our challenges. Fantastic. That's fantastic. So uh, now let's briefly understand how you run through these remedial programs. Uh, what are the different things if you can briefly tell, I know it is not a, a subject which you can squeeze in two minutes, but if you can when, tell us. When we say remedial, it is uh, there are our own strategies. Remedial is all about not reteaching the same thing. Correct. People understand remedial means asking them to write for 10 times or giving some shortcut, reducing the subject. That's not remedial. Correct. Remedial is a scientific process of teaching a child how to read and how to write when he has this difficulty. Okay. So first, that's where the phonetics comes in the first place. Okay. Now, after phonetics, there is something called word strategy. Okay. How to identify the word, how to dissect the word. Mm. Then comes reading strategy. Spelling strategy. Writing strategy. Study skill strategies. Then my all this, again, in study skills, you have mind mapping and various other uh, uh, things. Then visualization as a strategy. Mm. Then thinking strategy. Fantastic. So all these things are called as, then paraphrasing and all those things comes in like. This is what we call it as a remedial program. Okay. So, so for everything, for, there is a structure. A very structured program. Mm. When you learn this, you can see a significant change in the child's uh, reading that will give him a lot of confidence. The self-esteem will go high. Mm. He is ready to move. Fantastic. Today, technology is there. Our school, in open school in India, we are the only school to be accredited by Microsoft. Wow. That's we are fantastic. a Microsoft showcase school. Okay. 2021 during Corona period, article was carried about carried by Microsoft about our work. So it is there in uh, the domain, the wow. public domain. Great. So we teach children the technology part, so that the technology helps them to overcome to a significant part on this disability also. Mm, okay. So in the last 23 years, I'm sure there would have been 
number of uh, successful stories if you can just talk about one or two uh, oh. top of the mind uh, yeah successful. 800 students have passed from my institute have right. all no doubt they are from different field engineers are there no doctors so far so engineers are there they are in business people most of them are business guys uh, okay. because they love now the trend is moving towards technology okay uh, we are very strong in mass communication and uh, visual communication okay so my first batch students five guys <laughs> uh, all the five are stars i would say one is now a great textile missionary business owner who has a partner in china he lives in china comes back and uh, earns money in dollars okay okay a dyslexic completed 10th standard from our school was unable to complete diploma second year drop out but today is a owner into the textile machinery field fantastic mm. second one is a hr in one of the multinational company okay third one is a agriculturalist and doing a wonderful job fourth one runs a textile business okay. trading business trading business okay fifth one running an electrical shop wow that's a first batch okay five years back i have a guy called charan i since because those five students have not i'm not going to reveal them their names because they never wanted to do it so okay but this child has said sir wherever you go please talk about me sir because that <laughs> so he is charan okay from pondicherry uh -huh. is dyslexic now works for phantom fx company vfx company wow india's biggest a uh, vfx company which makes movies mm so that's where he is working we identified him quite early at the age of 12 we identified his potential and talent we groomed him according to that he completed bachelor of fine arts from chennai um, government college and today he is working as a content artist in phantom fx company fantastic so a lot of uh, stories are there this few of them like i know it is so fascinating i think uh, you are doing uh, your i mean your profession is so fascinating that every day you have to do something new think new because the next child who is coming to you will not be same as what you have seen in the last 23 years no, that's And, a right uh, question see that the right thing you said it's not the correct. question right statement because because of these children only i was able to venture into so many field correct uh, to understand that field so since i am also a corporate trainer that helped me a lot to connect the corporate world into this alternative system fantastic so true thanks to ashok lailan thanks to textile company called eastman thanks mm -hmm. to kbb bank uh, who are supporting us in the infrastructure uh, of the lab what we have set up so now these people have seen our success story fantastic so that now the challenge is building the infrastructure giving them the right technology mm uh, uh we are now into the research of uh, virtual reality we are we have introduced okay we are working with our children very soon we are will be part of our student learning like great so it, i would say thanks to these students because of them as rightly say, uh, informed by you uh, the other child is different yes absolutely yeah. and the uh, the other exciting thing which is coming up is the uh, use of ai very true. i'm sure ai is going to dramatically change everything what we are doing any all of us actually last month uh, our student uh, took up a program on ai and they learned 20 tools already wow so that with that they are now coping up their educational and other presentation skills fantastic great 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 i, I know i mean i i can keep on talking to you and uh, it's uh, it's a fascinating area it's a area where uh, large amount of awareness is required and 
one of the reason to uh, host you today is to really um, spread that awareness amongst uh, all the parents. Um, in any case, the future of work every year is going to be different. Um, so even every child is special. Um, they may have some challenges on some areas, but they'll be fantastic in some areas which which is totally unexplored. And as you rightly said, I think by taking the support from the specialist uh, in the field of uh, psychology, psychoanalysis, uh, psychiatrists, and so on, uh, we can actually explore what is the real strength of the child and encourage them in that direction. And that, that should be the main strategy. Of course, you have all your strategies which you use on specific children. So... So it was great talking to you. Any last words you would now like to say? For the youngsters, since uh, you are part of this career uh, counseling and uh, you know, giving this awareness, I want the parents, when children say that, Papa, I am interested in this, Mama, I am interested in this, please, for heaven's sake, give them the opportunity. Absolutely, I agree. The every you. opportunity and exposure is very important for the brain connections, the neuro connections. Mm -hmm. the more the opportunity you are going to give the child will able to take a better decision Fair because enough. many children have the struggle of coming to 10th standard and unable to decide what to do mm. some of them even after deciding what they have to do in 11 and 12 when they complete 12th standard they get confused of what the program they have to take correct so this is where the parent should believe in scientific career guidance process absolutely See, this is where we are lacking. The studied people, the well-known people also, they miss out. They think they are better in giving career guidance. No, career no. guidance is a scientific process. Absolutely, I agree so with you. you. Parents, please, when they complete ninth standard or eighth standard end, get them a career counseling done, a career assessment done. Yeah. Why I'm saying eighth standard is important because seven... 6th, 7th and 8th only, they will start knowing the subjects. Correct. Physics, chemistry and all those stuff like geography, ecology, environment, business, etc, etc, etc. 9th and 10th is a time for the child to explore again. Once you do a career assessment, you will know in the 12 areas where your child is interested. Exactly. Interest is, interests are subject to change. We all know that. Yes. That is why I'm saying 8th standard is the right age because 9, 10, he will explore. Mm. Then he will understand, okay, let me take first group or second group or whatever the group. Based on that, the college can be decided. Correct. Few children would have been very good in physics, very good in chemistry, but parent would have said, like, go to engineering. Correct. It's not necessary at all. Go okay. to a BSc chemistry program. Go to a BSc physics program. Then do a metallurgy. Then exactly. you move on in life. You have so many opportunity today in India. Absolutely. You, uh, liberal studies are coming up now. Yes. Absolutely. Culinary studies are coming up now. India is the real uh, gateway opening for uh, different subjects to be studied. Correct. Humanities is going to be the key subject for tomorrow. Yes, yes. The NEP has already stated very clearly interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary students only going to shine the world. Absolutely. If you are a science student, think of commerce also. I am an example. I did my commerce, I did my science. So I have two degrees. One is a commerce degree, business management. Second one is a science degree that's called Master of Social Work in Medical and Psychiatry. Today, okay. I'm working for school students, college students, SME owners, corporate, I'm doing training program. Now, this is what the young parents should understand and schools should also take this career guidance as a serious thing. Absolutely. Career <clears throat> guidance cannot be done in 11 and 12. It has to start as in as possible. I, this would be the very important thing for the listeners. Like And for youngsters, do any program, you will shine in this world. Yeah. Any program in this world. 
there is nothing called if you study tamil or telugu you will not get uh, um, job or not today language is important absolutely so physics is important maths is important statistics is important get into pure science get into commerce anything economics yeah you have the life i would say rather than thinking only engineering and other subjects absolutely i agree with you and uh, and um, uh, in fact any subject you take up in any case the 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 world of work is changing so rapidly yeah. that um, whatever you study whether you are studying your engineering or any other undergraduate course or you are doing your masters course i can vouch for uh, the future that in future you will have to study more <laughs> and learn more so that's that's how it is uh, so no for the last thing to today see today i have done my program in hospital setting correct i need to understand about hospital yes tomorrow i am going to a school setting day after i am going for a small business owners exact so i have to be a multidisciplinary person absolutely so that to understand what is the change is going to come that's the order of the life the order of the day like i would say absolutely i completely agree and uh, great i think uh, uh, it has been really fascinating to learn about what you're doing and your your personal journey i think it's uh, quite inspiring to a lot of people i'm sure uh, all your fans across uh, the world and lot of my followers will actually enjoy this conversation and the most importantly will learn something about this subject which is so important uh, especially uh, parents with young children at home uh, please take this very seriously um, and it is not the end of the world uh, it is an opportunity which is there you just have to explore it so with those words i thank once again dr sendil kumar to be part of this conversation today and uh, hope to catch you again in some new subject and yeah. hope to learn more about your you can also think of some uh, doing a one hour awareness program for your parents those absolutely words. i think we'll do that we'll definitely do that yeah. we will uh, raise a uh, kind of a survey and find right. out when people want to really catch up and we'll uh, definitely organize one session for they that. can visit the website also I absolutely think. yeah great thank you so thank much you. thank you thank you hope you enjoy this episode We sincerely wish you could take something from our conversation today and be able to apply it to your life in a positive way. We value your feedback. This can help us improve our future episodes. So share your thoughts to serve you better. If you want us to focus on a topic which you think is of importance, let us know. We will share our expertise in future episodes. So, see you soon with a new topic and help you in your career journey.